Johnny Mac, 49ers fan and host of Daily Comedy News. Tom Brady recently, who got his butt kicked in by the 49ers, he had on his podcast Adam Sandler, hilarious comedian, Tracy Morgan, and Bill Burr. Pretty good booking there, actually, Tom Brady. Sandler said, Tom, it's funny. I was thinking of you because you in your hometown, San Francisco, I grew up in Manchester, New Hampshire, and I played Manchester like a month ago. When you're in your hometown, everybody, isn't it like a whole other feeling? It's a different vibe. I was more terrified going up in my hometown than I was the entire tour that I've been on. Tracy Morgan said, expectations are higher, too. Adam Sandler jumped back in. You're thinking of relatives who were there. You're thinking of friends you grew up with. You don't want to let them down. That's the biggest pain in the butt of it all. Bill Burr talked about playing Boston's Fenway Park. Burr said, the best thing I did to prepare for that show is I went to Boston, took a little vacation with my family beforehand. I love walking around the city because I got all these great memories and stuff. And I would walk by people. They'd be like, hey, Bill, what's going on? And they'd be like, good luck at Fenway. So it kind of felt like people were rooting for me. I don't know how to describe that experience. It was unbelievable and probably a lot more fun than losing 35-7 to to the 49ers. Whew. Tracy Morgan said anytime he has people he knows in the audience, he keeps them out of eyesight. Tracy said, as far as like when friends and family come, what I've adopted was I'm not doing this for y'all. It's a business and I have to do my thing. I can't do it for y'all because I'm not good with trying to make an impression. I'm not good at that. So I just tell my people, my sister, whoever I know, sit them in the back because I don't want to say something and you make a face because I'm going to flip on you. Mindy Kaling recently told Good Morning America that they couldn't make The Office today. Why? Mindy said, that show is so inappropriate now. The writers who I'm still in touch with now, we always talk about how so much of that show we probably couldn't make now. Tastes have changed, and honestly, what offends people has changed so much now. I think it actually it's one of the reasons the show is popular, because people feel like there's something kind of fearless about it or taboo that it talks about on the show. Back in 2018, Steve Carell agreed with that notion. He said the show's way more popular now than it was on the air. I just can't see it being the same thing, and I think most folks would want it to be the same thing, and it wouldn't be. Ultimately, I think maybe it's best to leave well enough alone and just let it exist as it was. To bring the show back, you'd literally have to have all the same writers, the same producers, the same directors, the same actors. Even with all those components, it wouldn't be the same. I've been meaning to check out PBC. I have been fascinated since I first saw the story. IndieWire writes, you've probably never heard of PBC. You probably haven't. Now, the accountants in the audience are like, wait, PBC, that means provided by client. Are you talking about accounting, Johnny Mac? Well, let me ask you, Mr. or Miss Accountant, have you heard of Flowcast Software? PBC is a branded content comedy series on YouTube that's about accounting. Stay with me. There's more to this. This is not just some throwaway story. If you listen every day, you can tell by where I play stories. Are we at the end of the podcast? No, we're not. So I'm going somewhere with this. Who stars in PBC, the branded content comedy series about accounting? Danny Trejo, Kate Flannery, Pete Gardner, Sherry O'Terry, Neil Flynn from Scrubs, and Creed Bratton from The Office. Yeah, I want to check this thing out. Season two, now streaming. Showrunner Michael Gallagher said early in the PBC development process, they discussed, is this a branded show or is this a real show? They went with real show. It just happens to be produced by an accounting company. They wanted to make something that's just as good as any other comedy out there today. And they wanted it to be the thing that would make people curious to say, hey, who made this show? Flowcast? What's Flowcast? Love it. Comparisons to The Office are easy, if not intentional. PBC is a mockumentary set in a mundane workplace. Kate Flannery from The Office is there. Creed Bratton is there. Pete Gardner plays The Office bumbling boss Dave. PBC is a scripted series that also looks to its actors for improv, with Gallagher subscribing to the Adam McKay School of Directing. Get one from the page, then let your performers loose. Accountants dig the show because accountants write the setups and comedians hit the punchlines. For example, how would this character actually uncover fraud? What are the real ways? Once we have the details, we can create the outrageous scenario. Love it. And that's a list of things I have to eventually watch. Kamal Nanjiani reflected on how the Eternals changed his relationship with food. This from the AV Club. Nanjiani said, it felt for a brief moment powerful. Remember he was like all ripped during Eternals? Then after that, it was by and large negative. In the beginning, I never had that reaction before. I think part of me always wanted it. It felt powerful. It felt really exciting. And then pretty quickly after that, it felt reductive. It felt naked. It felt vulnerable. And it made it so the discussion of my body exists in the public sphere. It made it so that I can walk down the street and someone will come up to me and say something about my body. Now he's playing the lead in Welcome to Chippendales, which, by the way, I keep forgetting. I love Welcome to Chippendales. Really, really fantastic show. 
Camille said, I realize I've been so rigid with food and used it in so many unhealthy ways and then forcing myself to eat unhealthy amounts of unhealthy food in a way got me out of that trap. It still worked to do, but it was freeing for months to just eat whatever I wanted to eat as much as I wanted. Sort of freed me from some of the ways that I've been thinking about food. The New Yorker wrote how the Daily Show squandered the opportunity that was Trevor Noah. They write on his first appearance on the Daily Show in 2014. The program's host at the time, John Stewart, emphasized the South African comedian's background when presenting him as the series' newest correspondent. Trevor wielded his origins to critique Western assumptions of his native continent, specifically that it's one giant village full of AIDS, huts, and starving children, and to deflate American exceptionalism. In the segment, he pictured an African mother chiding, be grateful for what you have because there are fat children starving in Mississippi. The New Yorker writes, the current iteration of the series was flashier and fleeter than it was in the Stewart years, with an audience that skewed younger and more diverse, but it often felt like Trevor Noah was coasting. This impression was bolstered by the revelation in a recent Hollywood Reporter profile that the comedian spent his weekends touring and generally avoiding political commentary in his own stand-up. During Stewart's heyday, it was obvious that he poured his intellect into the show. In contrast, Trevor Noah often gave the sense of complacency with a host who seemed much smarter than the material he doled out. Noah stands apart. His charisma lies in his coolness and detachment, his views from somewhere, but it's also decidedly anthropological. Noah's worldliness expanded Late Night's geographical imagination, but he rarely came off as caring on a gut level, let alone on Stewart's ulcer level, about the blow-by-blow of American horse race politics. Only occasionally did he fully deliver on that initial premise of using his outsider's gaze to illuminate or more sharply satirize America, as when he compared Trump in a celebrated viral bit to an African dictator. That's a good review of the Trevor Noah years. I think they nailed it here. Uh, Paste Magazine has an article, the 12 best comedy albums of 2022. They write comedy albums don't always get the attention they deserve. They can be overshadowed by their older brother, the fancy schmancy comedy special, meaning a video special. I did pre-read this list and A, I host this podcast every day. B, I also program the comedy channels for Live One. This is some deep stuff. Some of this stuff, even off my radar, did I just flex there? I don't mean to flex, but like I get paid to do this and I'm not familiar with Annick Adele's album Between Two Worlds. So great job out of Paste Magazine. I'm definitely going to check these albums out. Adele spends the hour discussing what it's like to be a rare German comedian feeling 50-50 about gender. Adele prefers no pronouns except your majesty or if utterly necessary, she slash her and the pitfalls of the corporate workplace. Where the comic really shines is during audience interactions. All right, that's good. Craig Fay's performance review. Canadian comedian Fay loves digging into the nitty gritty banalities of the office world, office life, landlines, cleaning house, but does so with such fervor that his bits feel fresh. Fay sums it up perfectly when he says, Offices have culture like the British have food. Next up, Luba Magnus's Baby Luba. Again, I never claim to know everything about comedy, but all this is deep. Canadian comic Luba Magnus' debut record, Baby Luba, feels like a harbinger of the twee renaissance. Magnus takes to the mic with a nervous enthusiasm that immediately endears her to the audience. The first word out of her mouth is literally, wowee. Her vivid use of imagery also strengthens the album. Whether she's describing how asparagus grows or the intricacies of whale death, her playful and hilarious use of language keeps listeners on their toes. All right, so there's three to check out. I'll chip away at the rest of the list over the course of the next few days, but not tomorrow, because I already recorded tomorrow, and I can assure you, I don't talk about this then. Follow the show for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your shows. See you tomorrow.